house of God tonight? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Is anybody excited to be in the house of God tonight? There we go. There we go. If I could, if we could stand to our feet tonight and come around the front. That's just how we worship in this house. If you feel comfortable, come around the front and worship with us. Um, that's what we're going to do in heaven one day. So we're going to get around the front, throne of God, and worship. So uh, we're going to open up tonight. If we got any prayer requests or praise reports, anybody got anything? What you got? pray for you tonight so Justin's dad's been diagnosed with cancer let's keep him in your prayers um, so we're going to pray for him in just a second anybody else her aunt's been diagnosed in the hospital or admitted to the hospital Keeping on Car- Carson right here has got a CT tomorrow of his sinuses, so let's keep him in his prayers. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, if we could, uh, if you want to come up here, we'll pray for you. If I get some of the prayer team up around here. If y'all want to just stretch your hands this way, we're going to pray. If um, somebody can get Carson right here. All right, let's pray and just lift up all our needs tonight. So, dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, God, and all that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to gather here tonight, God. You see all these needs in the house tonight, God. You see um, Justin's dad tonight, God. We lift up uh, Carson to you. We lift up every one of these needs to you, God. We know that you are the great physician. We know that you can do everything abundantly above all things, God. We're asking you to come into this house tonight, God, and move in this worship service, God, we know that you can do everything. We ask you to go with us tonight and help us to lift you up in all things. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we just lift our hands and let's just begin to magnify right now.
can we just lift our hands before we go any further right now? Across this congregation, can we just lift our hands and just begin to call on his name? Somebody tell him how perfect he is. Somebody tell him that right now. Let's lift him up and give him praise in the house. Come on, all over. Let's just stretch our hands to the heavens right now. Can we do that all over? Come on. Let's surrender. Amen. Before we go into our groups tonight, let's just give him praise. Amen. Right where you are. If he's been good to you, amen, he deserves the praise in the house. Amen. Let's just do that. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We're a grateful people. We're thankful, Lord. We choose joy tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus, whether we're happy or not, we choose joy. We choose you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Won't you just turn to your neighbor right now and just greet them, shake their hand. Amen. I like to say handshakes, high fives, and hugs. Amen. While you're being seated, if you can get your offerings together, we're going to plant some seeds and then we're going to, amen, we're going to get into the Word tonight and uh, classes, amen, right after we give, um, young people can go up to the classes, amen, we're going to, if you can, go ahead and stand to your feet, this will be the last time I ask you to stand. Amen. We have several ways to give. As you can see, we have ways uh, you can give online. Cash app. There's a QR code up on the screen. And uh, those of you that don't know how to use it, we do accept checks and cash. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Has he been good to you? I hope so. He's been good to me. Amen. 
let's uh let's we we in this church if you're not acquainted with uh our custom uh we do not just give normal offerings in this church we uh I feel like that over the years I have done a lot of things out of the reason feeling like that's what I'm supposed to do. And the 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 older I get and uh, the more that I learn about him, I've learned that I need to be intentional and purpose filled in everything that I do because we are sowers. And regardless if you know it or not, you're sowing all the time. Every action, every word is a seed sown. And guess what? It will be a harvest that is reaped. That's why it's important to know what you're sowing. It's important. Amen. I don't know if it's you, but I've, I've reaped some harvests that I didn't intend to sow. Amen. Amen. Uh, so we're going to choose tonight to not just walk up here and do something out of tradition, out of something that this is what we're just supposed to do this is what's you know uh what this, this is what religion is talking about no we don't want that we want you to declare what this seed represents in your life and we're going to proclaim that god is going to give it back a hundredfold not that we can have listen i don't preach a prosperity gospel prosperity is all about getting 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 so i can have 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 that's that's not what i what i preach my prayer for my life ever before even before I started praying this prayer and what I feel like what God gave me to pray over this church my prayer has always been God you can trust me with more you, do you understand what I'm saying God you can trust me with more I want you to know because this right here listen if you ever think that with what you're dealing with right now that you're like God if you ever give me more I could do better that's not the case that's not the case. I always say this right here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna pay tithe or give tithes or give offerings if you're not doing it working at a McDonald's. You're not gonna do it whenever you own a McDonald's. That's that's true. That's true right there. And that's just nothing but truth. You gotta learn to do it right now. You gotta learn to do it where you are. You gotta learn to be a giver. Amen. Are you a giver? We're going to be givers tonight. Amen. That's, that's what we are. That's who we are. Amen. So let's give it. I'm going to pray this prayer over your giving tonight. Amen. Because I believe God's favor rests upon this house. Amen. In Jesus' name. Here we go. Lord, your word says you give seed to the sower. I'm standing here tonight with seed in my hand. That must mean that you've entrusted me to be a sower. Why? Because you know I will not take your blessings and your overflow and put it into storage. There was a man in the Bible did that, and you cursed that. Lord, we do not give to get in this house, Lord, but we give to give. If we was to give to get, that would be prosperity, Lord. But since we give to give, that is the kingdom. Lord, your word says that when we give, it shall be given unto us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto us, Lord. Lord, this is our prayer that you bless men to bless us, but sooner than later, Lord, bless us to bless men. Allow our overflow to become somebody else's blessing. We want to be a distribution for your blessings, Lord, in this house. And since we pray that, we're not declaring a 30 or 60-fold return. But, Lord, we declare a 100-fold. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Won't you step out from where you are? Amen. Walk up here and give. Amen. Amen. Our youth class can be dismissed upstairs. Y'all think about me when y'all eating pizza or something up there. I'm kind of hungry right now. Save some pizza. All right. We're going to get into the Word of God tonight. Amen. And... Um, I feel like uh, I feel like this is this is something that we need to hear. Um, I actually started working on this. This was in my spirit, in my heart. Come around Saturday, 
And uh, that's what probably the battle was Sunday before I preached what I preached Sunday because I was working on this. And uh, so I just kind of want to give you a, the surface version tonight of this and kind of point out some things and then uh, we'll get you home. Okay, uh, got a little bit of reading tonight, but Nehemiah chapter 13 verses 1 through 9. I'm going to be reading out of the New Living Translation, and then I'm going to read one very small scripture out of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 in the King James Version. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verses 1 through 9, New Living Translation, it says this. It says, on the same day as the book of Moses was being read to the people, the passage was found that said no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be permitted to enter the assembly of God. For they had not provided the Israelite with food and water in the wilderness. Instead, they hired Balaam to curse them, though our God turned the curse into a blessing. Man, you've got to watch out for those generational curses, right? Something that they did all the way back to the children of Israel while they were in the wilderness was still costing them today. Watch, hear me when I say this, watch out about touching people of God. Watch out about touching the people of God. Watch out about the way you treat your brother and sister. Be careful. Verse 3, When this passage of the law was read, all those of foreign descent were immediately excluded from the assembly. Before this happened, Eliashib, the priest who had been appointed as a supervisor of the storerooms of the temple of our God, and who was also a relative of Tobiah, had converted a large storage room and placed it at Tobiah's disposal. Now, you'll need to keep up with what I'm reading. I promise you that it's, uh, it's going to benefit the room had previously been used for storing the grain offerings and the frankincense and various articles for the temple and the tithes of grain and new wine and olive oil, which were prescribed for the Levites, the singers, and the gatekeepers, as well as the offerings for the priest. And I was not in Jerusalem at the time, for I had returned to King Artaxerxes of Babylon in the 32nd year of his reign, and though I later asked his permission to return, near, I'm sorry, when I arrived back in Jerusalem, I learned about Eliashib's evil deed in providing Tobiah with a room in the courtyards of the temple of God. And I became very upset. And I threw all of Tobiah's belongings out of the room. Mm. Then I demanded that the rooms be purified. And I brought back the articles of God's temple, the grain offerings, and the frankincense. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 just simply says this right here. Neither give place to the devil. I want to preach on this subject tonight or talk to you for a little bit in this subject. Don't make room for the devil. It seems like a very simple very, very simple comment, statement, message, and I'm going to keep it simple because we need to hear this. Don't give room or don't make room for the devil. If you remember, to buy was a part of a trio, him, Sambalit, and Geshem, that tried to get Nehemiah distracted when Nehemiah rebuilt Jerusalem and its walls. Tobiah was an Ammonite that had ties to the high priest whose grandson had married the daughter of Sambalat. He persuaded Eliashib, which was the high priest, to clean out the storeroom of the temple and to create a place for him to stay and conduct his business. This was after... They had heard the law. Now check this out. This is after they heard the law of Moses clearly say that an Ammonite or a Moabite could not enter the temple. That this priest did exactly 
what he was not supposed to do and went into the temple and began to clean out the storeroom so that Tobiah could have a place to conduct his business and to stay. In other words, he made room for the enemy. It's not just... uh, It's not just putting somebody in a temple that wasn't supposed to be there, but it was the action. What gets me about this whole thought tonight was that what he had to do to make room for him. Whenever you bring something into your life, often... You have to make room for that something. Now, this is important to understand that often uh, bringing somebody or something into an already full life is going to cause you to give up something else. It does. I don't know about you, but I don't think I can fit anything else in my life right now. It's a full schedule. Does anybody feel that way? And so, if I was to bring anything else in right now, it takes away from everything else. There's not enough hours in the day. There's not enough time. Amen. And sometimes that's just the way life is that we got to adjust because when we do get a new job, uh, the hours we got to work often interfere with the schedule that we already have. Come on, somebody. And so what do we got to do? Well, I've got to adjust according to that schedule. So this is exactly the same principle that is being used right here as this priest does the unthinkable. He does exactly the opposite of what he's told to do. And what is that? He goes into the storehouse, and he begins to clean out the storehouse so that Tobiah could have a place to stay. Well, what's in the storehouse? Well, number one, the Bible says that he took out the grain offerings. Now, now think about this just for a second. He sacrificed the grain offerings, took out the grain offerings out of the storehouse just so the enemy could have a place to stay. Well, what are grain offerings? Grain offerings was used as a food offering given to the Lord that this would happen after, most of the time after the blood offering or the burnt offering that required blood sacrifice, the sacrifice of an animal. Uh, And this offering, the blood offering, uh, the burnt offering, had strict regulations and uh, there's nothing that could be added to it or taken away from it. it. It was what it was. You had to follow the rules and do it exactly how it was supposed to be done. But the grain offering could be personalized in its presentation. And it was used to represent a freedom of worship. That I did what I was supposed to do according to regulations, according to law, burnt offering, but now this is my freedom of presentation. I want to show you how I really feel about you. I want to show you what it, what beyond what I'm supposed to do. You know, that, I understand there's a lot of people out there, they, they do what they're supposed to do as a Christian, but I wonder what your grain offering would look like. <laughs> I wonder what your personalized worship looks like. I get it that you come to church on Sunday. I get it that you come to church on Wednesday. I get it that you're giving tithes and offerings. I get that you do what you're supposed to do or what we feel like we're supposed to do as Christians today. I get that, that you're trying to love on people and stuff. But what, when it comes down to it, what would your personalized worship look like? You see, because whenever you give place to Satan in your life, then what it ends up doing is you have to take the grain offering out in order to give him room. And whenever you begin to take the grain offering out, you'll continue to do what you're supposed to do. You'll continue until you get burnt out. 
Because I'm going to tell you something, if you're going on no fuel, and if you're going on no passion, and this thing is not personal to you, then all you're doing is according to tradition and religion, then guess what? You're going to get burnt out. Has anybody ever been burnt out before? I've been burnt out before. I know exactly what it feels like to be burnt out and have no passion and have no fuel and feel like that you are lifeless and that you are just going along with what you're supposed to go along with. I get it. It's a part of the walk. It's, sometimes you just got to go through that. Amen. Sometimes you just got to come out on the other end. Amen. Uh, but he had to take out the grain offerings. And not only did he take out the grain offerings, but he took out the frankincense. Now, the frankincense was used as a perfume. And most likely, uh, I would think that this might have been also the perfume that uh, when Mary anointed the, uh, Jesus uh, after she broke the alabaster box, that this could possibly be the type of perfume that she used as a frankincense type perfume that was costly. Uh, that this perfume was the perfume that was fit for a king. That this was given to kings. This is... This is this man. This spice right here. This this uh, perfume right here. This this thing had uh, created trade routes before. I mean, this thing was big. This was a money industry right here. That uh, that this was very costly. But this was also what was used to personalize grain offerings. That there was kind of stuff like this right here that was used to do that kind of thing. So. This was a part of the personalized worship that we have for God. That I'm going to tell you something. Your worship means something. You have your own signature of worship. Uh, David, David uh, actually talked about a type of praise. You know, uh, in, in the book of Psalms, that whenever the, Bible, uh, the book of Psalms talks about praise, it's actually uh, translated over to praise. But, man, there were seven different kinds of praise that David talked about in the book of Psalms. All we get is praise, because that's what it translates over into. But David had all kinds of praises, and I, Lord, I would forget them, but Zamar and Barak and, and Judah, and uh, I mean, uh, there was all kinds of different types of praise that he talked about. One of them was Tahila, not tequila. Some of y'all are like, I could do that, I could do the tequila praise. I've seen a couple people do that before. Amen. A Tehillah praise was a, what's this right here? It was the song of our testimony. The song of our testimony. It was just right here. It was an unrehearsed praise. It was the song of our heart. It was what our heart cried out to God. It was personalized. It was something that only, what's this right here, we could sing. And nobody else could sing it. I want you to know this right here. You have a Tehillah praise that is personalized. It's the song of your testimony. Nobody else can sing it like you can. Amen. Put me in the key of E flat and let's go. You know what I'm saying, Charles? Amen. It's my song. It's my song. You can't sing my song. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't sing my song. You can't sing my song. You don't have my testimony. I've got things that you know about, but I've got some personal battles that I fought. That you have no idea. I've overcome some things in my life before that you have no clue. I had to fight some things alone that nobody else could fight with me. I've been there before. You know, I've got a testimony. I've got a song that I sing unto God. And that he hears me and he knows that it's my voice and he knows that it's my song. My God, some of you need to look at your praise like that. Amen. Some of you need to know that you got a special praise. And I'm going I'm to tell you right here, whenever you begin to give place to the devil in your life, I'm trying to tell you when you know you're giving place because you'll lose that song. You'll stop singing that song. That song starts becoming a, a vital part of who you are. Amen. But I'm glad that I have a testimony. I'm glad that I have a song. Somebody better say amen in the house. Amen. Not only that, but the ties of grain. begin to. They had to take the ties of grain out. And I'm going to tell you this right here. One way you got to know that whenever you start giving place to the devil in your life is that you stop giving. Oh, I love talking about giving. You know why I love talking about giving? Because I'm a giver. And I'm going to tell you somebody else that's a giver in this house that he would never say nothing about. That man right there sitting on the front pew is a giver. See, I know that some well, there wouldn't be people in this house that know that because you don't look at the financials. And everybody, just take... 
just take Pastor Jason's word, and I'll tell you that he's a giver just like I'm a giver. And I told somebody else the other day, I said, you know what? I said, there's a spiritual aspect to this, but also there's a carnal aspect to this. And I want to talk about the carnal because you always hear talk, talk about the spiritual. Is that okay? Can I be carnal for a second? You know, the other day, here a while back, and listen, I'm, I'm not knocking anything when I say this, so don't take this as a political statement. I'm not making a political statement, okay? The other day, I was talking about, hey, we're fixing to forgive all the student loans, or I don't know who all they get. I, I, I didn't get the benefit of that. But anyways, uh, the thing about it is, is that everybody that had their student loans forgiven, good for you. I mean, that's awesome, right? But the thing about it is, we'll, we walk around and we're like, we got something for free, we got something for free, we got something for free. And, and the fact is that it's not... Not, it's not free. Somebody like me had to pay for it. Uh, okay, anyways, it's not free. Enjoy it. I can't do nothing about it. I'm happy for you. Enjoy. But it's not free. So here's the carnal aspect of, of people giving and people that don't give. Is the benefits of this church, I'm glad that we get to enjoy them. I'm glad that we get to enjoy the facilities that we have and, and all that goes on in this house and, man, everything that is put on. But I came to tell you that it does not happen for free. So the carnal part of me likes to look at this like, I'm a tither and I'm a giver. I'm an offering giver. I'm a tither. I give, 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 give. And not just in church, but to people and all kinds of stuff. I, mean, I try to help as much as I can and everything else. But guess what? It's not free in the house. So whenever I see people that... Don't give. I'm sitting there thinking, and then they go out and they have 10 vacations a year. And they go buy a new boat and stuff like that. I sit there and look at it like, well, guess what? It's not free. Somebody's having to pay for it. Somebody's having to pay to keep the lights on. Somebody's having to, to pay to keep everything up and going. Is that okay? I, now, I could talk about the spiritual part, but you hear me talking about that all the time. But I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm glad that God has given me the ability to give. But it doesn't just happen right now. But he, he put something in me a long time ago. And the reason I use McDonald's and everything for because I used to work at McDonald's. Back in the day. I'm talking about, I remember, Tammy, I remember writing those $10 checks out for ties. And I was happy to be able to give it. I never forget. I was happy. I was like, man, look, I'm able to give. And it was something on the inside of me. I just love to do it. But watch this right here. As God began to bless my quality of life, guess what? I also raised my quality of giving as well. Because that's what I, was, that's what I felt. That's why when God blesses you, I'm going to bless him back. There's a reciprocity that is happening between heaven and earth. Don't stop the flow. Don't stop the flow. Amen. It's happening. Amen. That's how I know. That's how I keep check on myself. It's because I know of that, that if I give place to the enemy, that I've got to take the tithes of grain. Because you can't have the enemy and the tithes in the same place. Watch this right here. What else did they take out? They took out the new wine. Now, some of y'all, y'all, y'all stay carnal when I was talking about tithe, but we got to bring it back into spiritual now. They took out the new wine. Well, what's the new wine in the New Testament? It's the Holy Spirit. It's that power and it's that passion. Amen. Because whenever you give place to the enemy, guess what? You're going to be drained. When you give place to the enemy, all that Holy Spirit, all that, that power and that passion is just not going to be there anymore. I'm trying to give you some signs right now of what to look for whenever you're giving place to the enemy of your life. Not only did they take that out, but they took the olive oil out. So now you messing with my anointing. You're telling me that I got to give up the anointing if I'm going to make place for, the, for Satan in my life? No, sir. I'm going to come to tell you that I've had to go through too much to get this anointing. 
Does anybody know what I'm talking about right now? I need some anointed people in the house that know you've had to go through too much. You've had to suffer long enough to get where you are right now and to be able to do what you're doing. Amen. I've worked too hard. Somebody say it's in the storeroom. It's in the storeroom. I have access to this stuff anytime that I want it. Why? Because it's in the storeroom. And I'm going to come to tell you, if the enemy's going to penetrate your life or get into your life, he's going to want it to the storeroom. And this priest knew better than to let this man in. He had been against Jerusalem the whole time. He had been trying to distract Nehemiah the whole time, him and his buddies, and he still let him in the temple of God. And the thing about it is, is we know better a lot of times. We know when the enemy's coming in. And we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. We know whenever he's trying to work. But we like to entertain it. And the thing about it is, if I'm not careful, if I begin to entertain it long enough, I'll be willing to give my up the storehouse so he'll have a place to stay in my life. What are you doing to keep him out of your life? What I love about this is, well, before I say that, I've, I've got this written down. Don't sacrifice your worship, your giving, your power, your fire, your anointing, just so you can give place to Satan. You, who said that? You want me to say it? I said, don't sacrifice your worship, your giving, your power, your fire, your anointing, just so you can give place to Satan in your life. It even affected the services in the temple. It affected the services in the temple because the priests were hungry. They were starving. One thing that you got to listen to me, listen when I say this, one thing that we have to do is we got to make sure that our leaders are in good shape. We got to make sure that's one thing, man. I, I I believe in is making sure that 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 our our leaders are leading us, you know, and that they have everything that they need. Make sure, hey, that hey, you know, check on them every now and then. Ask how they're doing. Call them up. Don't don't just let them be out there on the front lines and and not ever check on them, man. Let me tell you something. It does my heart good sometimes just to have a phone call. And just say, hey, just want to let you know, you're doing a good job. I love you. Can I do anything for you? I don't need anything. I don't need anything. But you know what? You just made my day. Thank you so much for checking. Because people don't realize the battles that are going on. Because there are so a lot of people, they compare their life. This is what gets me a lot of times. A lot of people, they compare their life to your life. And since they have time to do something, they think you ought to have time to do something. Well, I'm over here watching TV, and I think, you know, I'm going to spend an hour on the phone with you. I'm going to tell you, I ain't got an hour, and you won't get an hour. <laughs> Amen. It's just what it is. And the temple became neglected until, watch this right here, Nehemiah came in and threw them all out. He went and got to buy stuff. I'm talking about, I don't know if Tobiah was there or not. I don't think he was. But he went and got to buy stuff and started chunking it out in the front yard. And he said this right here. I, I, this is the way I see it, okay? I, this is the way I see it. He's like, this room stank. Purify this room. Spray some perfume. Get the, get the frankincense out. We're about to anoint this place. Because I'm going to tell you something, you don't want the enemy in your house. Hey Amen. You don't want the, I, I, I remember, now check this out. I, I, Lord, thank you for reminding me. I've, y'all, some of y'all heard me tell this story before. But when I was youth pastor, now this is whenever me and Leanne first got married. First got married. And uh, we had young people over at little apartment on Shiloh Road. It was a little triplex apartment. i never forget having young people over one night. And... Um, I had a neighbor that moved all the way down to the other end of the, the, the little triplex, and, and he had been in there for about six months. I had never really talked to him. I always saw him over there sitting on his, and he'd always be just sitting out there on his lawn chair, and he'd be looking at you and wave at you, and, uh, and he always played his music really loud. I mean, it'd be boo, doo, 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 you know what I mean? Like, just like, man, what is he doing? 
over there. And one night, I was walking to take my trash out at the, at the road and had young people over that night. And we was all in there playing games and, wa- and watching stuff, watching movies or whatever the case may be. And I seen him out there, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, go talk to him now. And while I was walking, I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to him. But I'm going to go over there and talk to him real quick. And the Lord, he said, I'm going to give you the words to say. That's what I really felt while I was on my way over there. I get over there, and I said, I introduced myself. He introduces himself. We begin to talk. And uh, while I'm talking to him, uh, he begins to ask me. He said, man, I noticed that these people around you are always happy. And I'm like, yeah. I said, they all, we all go to church each other, with each other. And I said, you know, I, I told him about what we believe and stuff. He was asking about what we believe. And I told him, you know, we, uh, uh, you know I told him about our worship. I told him about being spirit-filled and so on and so forth. And this man right here, he said, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself. And I stopped him and I said, I said well, I want to tell you what I already know about you. And he said, well, what do you know? And I said, you're a witch. And he looked at me and started laughing. And he said, how do you know that I'm a witch? I said, because the Lord spoke that to me on the way over here. I said, I have no idea who you are. I just know that's what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He was thrown off so bad. He's like, man, this is a power. That's what he felt. He said, wow. He said, that's powerful right there. He said, I love it. He said, I like that. I, we want that. He said, you know what? He said, we believe the same thing. He said, a lot of the same things, we believe the same way. He said, do you know we speak in tongues too? He said, do you know that we anoint with oil and we pray for people too? He said, we do all the same things you do. He said, the difference is, is he said, we don't believe Jesus is who you say he is. And I'm sitting there thinking this right here. uh, We got to watch out because you know what? I don't want to be caught up in the technique of things, not being dependent upon the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it is contingent upon him. I have nothing to do with it. I'm just doing what the word says. Amen. Amen. That we are fighting. That there is a battle out there. And it's on our front, it's at our front door. It is right there at us. You know, in fact, when I go back and I read the word of God in Nehemiah, if you'll go back to Nehemiah chapter 4, watch this right here. Nehemiah said this. He said that uh, there was the people that were guarding the wall because everybody was threatening outside. They were threatening to tear the wall down and they were threatening to kill them and stuff. You know what? What he did, he equipped his people. To the fact of where there was half of them, they were working from sunlight to dark. They worked with a a sword in one hand and something to work with a hammer in the next. I mean, these people were doing, they were multitasking. And uh, they were, uh, they never, watch this right here, they never took off their clothes. They went to bed with the sword on their hip. Now, Here's the thing I want to say about that. And I'm fixing to end this in just a little bit. But here's the thing that I want to say. Watch this right here. You can't necessarily live that kind of lifestyle. I can't, I can't always live like that. In other words, there's going to come times. There's going to come times that say work. Let's look at the work real quick. I can't work 70 hours a week all year long. I can't work. And anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I can't work like that all year long. But I know that at sometimes there's going to come times in my workplace that's going to require me for a season to work like that in order to get certain things done. That's the same way the church has got to be aware of is that we don't always, I know not all the time, are we going to sleep with a sword on our side. Not all the time are we going to be attacked. Not all the time have we got to worry about the enemy coming in. But guess what? There's going to come times in the church that we have got to be that kind of church and we have got to be aware of an attack that is coming against us. And there's got to be urgency enough to say, you know what? I'm, all, I'm ready. I'm aware of what's going on. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to come in and take place and residence in my life. Sometimes you've got to live on guard. You got to protect what's going on. You got to be able to discern the times. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 27. I'm going to read this and we're going to go home, okay? And I want you to hear this because this is important. This is important. In fact, verse 27 says, Don't give place to the devil, but I want to give you what he's talking about before he gets up to that. And it says this right here. 
This is out of the Passion Translation. And it's talking about how we're supposed to live this new life in Christ. But it says this. This is some good word. You want to write this down. Go back and study it later. It says, so with wisdom given to me from the Lord, I say, you should not live like unbelievers around you who walk in their empty delusions. Now, this is giving us an, uh, some definition. This is giving us some signs of unbelievers, okay? Empty delusions. Their corrupted logic has been clouded. Why? Because their hearts are far from God. When their logic is clouded, it's because their heart's not in it. Their blinded understanding, and here it goes, and deep-seated moral darkness keeps them from the true knowledge of God. Because of their spiritual apathy, they surrender their lives to lewdness, impurity, and sexual obsession. But this is not the way of life that Christ has unfolded within you. If you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, watch this, it will be seen in your life. It's, it's going to manifest in your life. It's going to manifest. Somebody say it's going to manifest. For we know that the ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. And that he taught you to let go of the lifestyle of the ancient man, the old self-life, which was corrupted by sin and deceitful desires that spring from delusions. Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you and be transformed as you are emb embrace the glorious Christ within you, your new life, and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness and you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. Now watch this right here. So discard every form of dishonesty and lying so that you will be known as one who always speaks the truth. For we all belong to one another. That, that is so important right there. Because we all belong to one another. So be ready to really speak the truth to one another. Because we belong to one another. Because we are unified together. And I want to tell you this right here. I think a lot of times is that we think unity is uniformity. And it is not. Whenever you got this many people together, guess what? You're not going to be uniform all the time. You're not going to think alike all the time. You're not going to agree all the time. That does not mean that you cannot be unified. You have got to take up for each other. You have got to watch each other's back. I said this uh, uh, to somebody today, and, and man, I really reflected on it. I said, you know, we have got to, uh, we have got to be uh, for, let me see how I put this right here. I said, we have got to be for uh, to love and be for the people that we are working with just as much as the people that we are working for. It, you know, we, we've got to understand that, especially as the leaders in this house and the church in this house, that we're going to be reaching out to people and we're going to be pulling them in. This church, I'm going to tell you, sometimes it's good to have problems in the church because that's what happens. Ministry brings problems. It just does. But I'm going to tell you, there's a whole other set of problems out there when you're not doing anything. But whenever you're in the ministry, when you're working in it, I, tell, I say this all the time, you don't have the luxury to be offended by one another. You've got to learn how whenever the devil's coming in, when the enemy's coming in, you have got to understand that I cannot give place to the enemy right now. I cannot make room for him. If there is a concern today about the greatest uh, threat on the church today, it is offense. It is the greatest, is the greatest threat, is offense. And I said this about Bill Johnson the other day. He taught, I've, I've got a little video of offense with him that is just amazing. I love listening. I've listened to it again today. I've listened to it probably about 10 different times. 
But, you know, he said, you know, offense comes as a virtue. You know, the enemy does not come with a pitchfork, horns, red cape, knocking on your door and saying, it's the devil. You know, that's not how he comes in. I'm sorry, but that's not how the enemy presents himself. The enemy presents himself as an angel of light. So, in other words, I'm coming at you like a virtue. I'm coming at you as something that you see is right. I'm coming at you as something that, you know what, have you ever seen, this is what he asked, has you ever seen somebody that's offended that did not have a good reason to be offended? Everybody that's offended has a good reason to be offended. But the thing we got to do is what? We got to make sure that we don't take, give place to the enemy to come in and get into our storage, to get into our anointing, our worship, and start meddling around in our house. Don't give place to the enemy. Protect this house. Protect your heart. Guard your heart. We are not ignorant of his devices. We know what's happening. We just can't give place to what's happening. Just because we feel it's virtuous does not mean we give place to it. Recognize it. Be aware of it. And do what Nehemiah done. Take its stuff out. Throw it out in the front lawn. And tell it, it can't live in this house. It cannot live in this house. Protect your people. Protect them. Let's stand to our feet. Armor of God had nothing on its back. There's no, there was nothing there. And I was just thinking this today. I was like, you know, it's, it's important that we protect the most vulnerable place on each other. And that is, we don't, never, we don't ever want to be accused of spiritual murder by stabbing somebody in the back. Or even allowing somebody for that to happen to somebody. We, we don't want that. Listen, when I say this, ministry is never perfect ministry is never perfect I wish it was but whenever we're dealing with each other and we're dealing with people we're going to have to learn how to give grace to each other because the word of God tells us that the grace we receive is always contingent upon the grace we give and if we don't learn how to give grace to each other then what it does is end up stopping up the heavenly flow of grace in our life. And so we got to find a place. A lot of times when we get on our face. And I was telling somebody this today, I said, just like Bill Johnson said, and I, I love what he said, he said, I'll find a place. He said, I'll get down. And he said, I'll just start saying, God, I release. He said, I just release my right. I give up my right to be offended. I give up my right to be offended. I give up my right to be. If I have a right, yeah, I have a right. I have a right. Believe, believe me, there's times, I'm going to tell you, there's been some times in ministry that some folks said some stuff to me that I wasn't able to leave at an altar that I took home with me. But I'm going to tell you, the, the older I get, the wiser I get, and the more I realize that, Jason, stay there until you get it out of your spirit. Don't let it get into your spirit. Don't let it get into your spirit. Talk about it. Get it out there. Tell the truth. Be truthful. That's the best thing you can do. Be truthful with each other. But on the other side of truth, guess what? You always should just say, hey, Mama D, come here real quick. Mama D, hurry up. Come here. Come here. You always should be after you tell the truth. I'm going to tell you how I feel about something, okay? Okay, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm going to tell you how I feel. I'm going to tell you. You will give it to you. It might sting a little bit. But by the end of it, what we're going to do is you're going to turn this way. And I'm going to, I got you back, Mama D. I got you back. 
I'm not going to let anything happen to you. I got to guard. I got to guard that. Amen. Because there's no armor for that place. This, if we're going to be a church of ministry, and this is a church of ministry, we got to do it the right way. Don't make room for Satan. Don't give place to the devil. I wonder if we can all just come up here tonight. Amen. All of us. Just, just all of us. What I want us to do is I just want us to join hands with the person that's next to us. Amen. And I just want you to lift our hands up in the air. Join with each other. And I want you to say, God, correct my heart. Correct my spirit. And if you say this the right way, you're going to feel a release. And I want you to say, I give up my right to be offended. I give it up. I give it up. I will not give place to the enemy of my life. He cannot have my anointing. Yeah. He can't have my new wine. Uh Uh-uh. No, he's not having my grain offerings. He's not having my personalized worship. He's not getting any of that because it belongs to you. It belongs to you. I will not make room for the enemy to come in and take all this. I will not sacrifice all these good things. All this stuff I've been through, everything, all the hell that I had to fight to get to where I am right now, it's not going to be sacrificed. Uh, it's not going to be sacrificed. I done come too far. Too many people done prayed for me. Too many people done prayed for me. Amen. I'm ready for a new life, a new walk, a new mind right now. Restore my mind back to where it was. Lord, restore it. Make it better right now. Come on, that's it right now. Come on, that's it. Just press in. Press in. Press in. Come on, there's a release happening in this house right now. You can feel it. You can feel it. There's a release happening all over this place. Ah. Come on, there's a power in this house that comes through unity. Come on, that's it. Come on, release it right now. Release it. Come on, you're declaring something in the atmosphere. You don't have to hold everybody's hand in this place and declare. What's happening right now is that we're all joining together. There's a faith in this house that is joining together. Come on, there's a unity in this house. Come on, release it. Release it. Release it. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm going to let it go. Come on, that's it. Come on, let's just worship right now. If you got your grain offered with you right now, come on, I want you to give him a personalized praise right now in the house. Come on. You got to put that, your frankincense on. You got to put your signature on it. Somebody give him the song of your testimony right now. Can you do that all over the house? Come on, lift your song up. Sing your song. Your song of redemption right now.
lift your hands in the house one more time before we get out of here. Come on, lift them up high. Now listen to me when I say this. If you have not given place to Satan, you're going to have a grain offering. Ah, ah. You're going to have a grain offering. What is that? That's a personalized praise. Your neighbor can't give it for you. Do you hear me right now? Your neighbor cannot do it for you. You got to do it by yourself. Right now in this house, come on, I want you to lift your voice up and I want some words that only you can speak. I want some praise that only you can give. I want it to come out of your mouth right now. Can you do that in this house? Come on, I want you to lift your voice up. I want you to lay it all out before him. Come on, I want you to take that alabaster box and I want you to begin to break it. Come on, nobody else can do it for you. Amen. Your wife can't do it for you. Your husband can't do it for you. Your neighbor can't do it for you. Mama D can't do it for you. You've got to do it yourself. Give it to him. Amen. Let them sing it. Let them sing it. Come on, sing it loud. Come on. Sing it again. Come on. Last time, last time. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Such a presence. Such a presence in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God, I surrender. God, I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Amen. Man, God is good. God is so good. God is so good. many of people's ever watched I don't know how many people's ever watched the MMA fights or whatever and see people get into arm locks man they'll be all twisted up and be just suffering and you're just like when are they going to tap when are they going to give up and you know what that's the way it is with us and God is that we suffer our way to surrender we suffer our way to surrender but man I just what I, this is what I feel in this house right now. This is why it's so special and I'm trying not to waste it. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste what that that savor that's going on right now, that that frankincense, man. That's what's happening. Just that smell, that feeling. Is I feel like tonight, I feel like some people are tapping. I feel like there's some people that says you don't even have to do that. 
You don't even have to get me to that point right now because I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I surrender. I surrender. One more time before we leave. With hands up. I surrender. And I want you to do that right now. I want you to say that. You don't have to do anything else. I surrender. I surrender. I give it to you. I will not give place to the enemy. I surrender. God is so good. God is so good. Heal our hearts. You see your people right now. I'm going to pray over before you leave. You see your people right now. This is a working people. This is a people that are in ministry. These are people that don't just do it here on Sundays, Lord, but we are out there working and we are out there, Lord, in our community, Lord. And Lord, the, the, the enemies want to stop that. The enemy wants to stop that. The, there's, and and, and any time there's ever division, any time there's ever going to be a, a house that cannot stand is simply because it's divided. It's always an inside job, Lord. It's always an inside job. It's never an outside one. Lord, but tonight, we cancel the assignment of the enemy. Not because we say so, but because your word of God was spoken. And it says so. Because it has the final authority over everything else. Because your word will not return void. But it will send out and it will accomplish what it was sent to do. Lord, we declare that word over ourselves tonight. I declare that word over me. I will not give place to the enemy. I will recognize him for who he is. And whatever the word of God says, I will allow it to, to permeate my heart. Lord, but he cannot have my grain offerings. He cannot have my frankincense. Amen. He can't have my olive oil. He can't have the things of God in my life, Lord. He can't have my new wine. But, Lord, it belongs in the storehouse. It belongs with me. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Come on now. Somebody say it's mine. I will not sacrifice it to give room to the enemy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Amen. Greet each other. Love on each other. Tell each other how much you love each other. Amen. Say, I got your back. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hey, guys. I hope everybody enjoyed our midweek worship session. And I hope everybody got a refresher and is ready to go into the rest of the week. We hope to see you Sunday at 11 a.m. for worship. Bye, guys.